But also, all, I, all I gotta say is this: I'm not gonna say anything but this. I don't know um, this man, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any type of way. But I think our our government, bro, they're gangsters, man. <laughs> and I swear they ran it up like, "Yo, snitches get stitches," yeah. and they were like, "We're not having that." Sh and it ends here. And who's gonna talk back to the government? Raise your hand in this room. Are you gonna talk back to the government? Nope. Not yeah. me. We get in trouble with YouTube, man. Yeah. <laughs> What up, everybody? Welcome back into the Thuman Show. Thuman Show. We want to thank you guys so much for the positive feedback on the last few episodes. They keep us going. Uh, we're really happy with the outcomes. Um, let's drop a like on this video. Our most liked podcast has like 13,000 likes. Let's see if we can get 13,000 likes. Uh, we're aiming for it. And then drop a comment, guys. Today in the episode, we talk a lot about addiction, addiction to pornography, addiction to alcohol. And then we also talk about the YouTuber who was recently seen um, abusing her dog. We want to know in the comments down below, guys, do you guys think that people deserve a second chance in life, whether it be with addiction, whether it be with the YouTuber uh, doing what she did? We'd love to hear you guys' input. And uh, yeah, George, you got anything to say? Uh Today's a good podcast. It's a really good it's one. It's a really good one. Yeah. So so I'm excited. Sit back, listen up, and welcome into the Thuman Show. I hate when you're eating at a restaurant and you walk out smelling like that restaurant. Like, what do you mean? Like I was in I was in Vegas and I went to Benihana's and I walked out and I was like, man, I can't go to the club smelling like fried rice and shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just some morals. My cologne got, like literally, I couldn't, I had to wash my clothes. What's the point of rice cakes? <laughs> It's, you know, it's for like... To eat air? Yeah. It's for like when people want to lose weight and they just want to put like food in their mouth and chew to make it feel like they're eating as you're really not eating anything. It's kind of like jewels. They just put them in their mouth. They have oral fixations. Same thing with food. Oral fixations. It's going to be my new uh, sex talk. Hey, girl. <laughs> I know you got some oral fixations. <laughs> Welcome back into another episode of... The Tuman Show. The Tuman Show. It's <laughs> when two people show you the show. Yo, we've we've been crushing it lately, man. I'm getting more comments. I've never had this good of an like. Here's the thing. I was I was telling somebody this. I go. I've always had like we. What what is blowing right now? Yeah, the air conditioning. I'll take care of it. Okay. Should I keep talking? Or yeah, keep okay. talking. <laughs> I we've had oh, we've always had people engage with us, but I've never had people engage with us within paragraphs. I know. <laughs> like they usually just send us ah ha ha you're funny or like oh my god I love you or you're that guy from Bind like you're <laughs> still like, so, <laughs> like 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 that but like this one they're sending us like paragraphs. I know. I know shit's real when they start dear George. I was like what the fuck? dear George. <laughs> I was like oh shit. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of emails. Uh, and a lot of we actually have a lot of questions. Yes, answer. yes. I actually want to jump this in. week on the podcast. There's a bunch of fan questions. Yeah, I want to jump in with this actually because a girl tweeted me. You saw this, right? How many girls have tweeted you since the podcast dude, started? A ridiculous amount. I know, right? How many, dude? It makes me want to go back on Twitter. I tweeted this. <laughs> I was like, "Yo, you guys are gassing me up." I'm jumping back on Twitter, but let me pull this up real quick because I uh, I retweeted it. Because I was like, yo, I'm going to talk about this on the podcast. By the way, someone commented, get off your phones while you're on the podcast and have a conversation. I have all the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're, not, we're not on Instagram, guys. <laughs> so like, like, yeah. yeah. And um, no, we have stuff that we want to talk about or we forgot to talk about. Or right. we're reading stuff that you sent us. You jackass. Hop <laughs> off of us. Fuck it. Everybody has to be so negative. I know, dude. You can't just enjoy the podcast. You know yeah. what? Whoever that is. Fuck you. Go watch Impulsive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, sorry. Man, we're jumping in hot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, so this girl... By the way, George isn't drinking piss. It's I thought you didn't want me to say it because you might be working with somebody. That's not... That's not fro... <laughs> yeah, asshole. By the way, George isn't drinking piss. It's an energy drink. <laughs> All right, um, anyways, go ahead. Anyways... This girl said something in the beginning where she's just talking about how much she loves the podcast, but then right. she hit me with a question and she goes, I agree on your thoughts and your morals and stuff on raising awareness on, you know, our future daughters. And in that in common, I want to ask you, what about your son? Mm. And if he wants to be a stripper and, or he wants to use his body in ways to make money, how do you feel? Um, so right off the bat, I'm just going to pump the brakes on that. Um, I'm not having a son. My I'm not having a son. Not strong <laughs> <laughs> After watching a lot of pa a podcast, I'm not having a daughter. I'm not going to put myself to yeah. that stress. Let me, let me, okay. This is what I want to do. I'm going to be real. And a lot of times I'm real. A lot of people don't want to hear it, but I'm going to be real. My parents came from the Middle East. And back in the day in America and recently back in the day in the Middle East, um, chauvinisticness was a thing. And it wasn't a wrong thing in cultures. 
But my parents What's chauvinism? Chauvinistic is when the man runs the house And the okay. woman doesn't Or mm. they say stuff That it's like It's okay for guys And not okay for girls My parents nipped that in the butt for me At a very young age And I do not feel Any woman should be respected any less than any man. So I will raise my son with that intention. So whatever goes for my daughter will absolutely go for my son. I don't care if it's a time out or time in. Like for example, I grew up where my sister had to be home at 12 o'clock at night because mm -hmm. it's late. I had to be home at 11. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't have that because I moved to California and we had different lifestyles. But if I would have lived in Arizona, it would have been the same rules. Um, yeah, the same rules apply. I don't. If you raise your family to thinking that one thing could go right for your daughter and not for your your son, you are already raising them to be chauvinistic. And I mean, would you would you allow? You said you wouldn't allow your daughter to be a bottle service girl, but would you allow your son to be a bartender? I would let my daughter be a bartender. Okay, so I wouldn't let her be a bottle service girl. What's the difference? Um, I I wouldn't want. Mind you, here, listen. A lot of people came at me and uh, actually I only got good response. So yeah, I'm just going to yeah. tell how it is. Um, <laughs> my daughter behind the bar where no man could put their hands on her or a security guard could be there immediately if a guy's getting out of hand. Because here's the thing. It's a little secret. Not a lot of people know this. Guys are pieces of shit when they drink. <laughs> I'm gonna you guys might have not known that, but guys who have money and that they're drunk, they mm -hmm. do some stupid stuff. Mm -hmm. Like we were at the club and I almost slapped the shit out of some dude because he grabbed Trisha's hair. Oh, yeah, you told me about that. And I literally grabbed him by the face. And I go, bro, what are you do? I will smack this shit out of you. And he's like, no, 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 I was being flirty. I go, I don't know <laughs> what you think flirting is. But if I ever, ever, ever catch you touching her again, I'll kill you myself and I'll go to jail. And he's like, oh, okay. I was like, now nah, walk out of my face. So, yeah, I shouldn't have probably threatened him because that's pretty wrong of me. But <laughs> see what I mean? Like, that guy could have been a nice guy when he was sober because right. he was drunk. He thought he was, like, being flirt. Guys are stupid when they're drunk. As are girls. Let's not be chauvinistic here. <laughs> yeah, but I'm talking about my daughter being a, like yeah, yeah, a bottle yeah. service girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I've seen it. A lot of guys are like, how could you say that? Because like, I've seen it. I've seen guys grope girls and then they're like, okay. And then they can't do much because they don't want to lose their job. Mm -hmm. So they kind of let things go under the water. If my daughter wants to be a bartender and be behind the thing, then all day, every day. If she wants to get her hustle, then get your hustle. But the question <clears throat> was, would you let her or him use her body? Now, I wouldn't, if my, okay, let me correct before everybody jumps to conclusions. If my daughter wants to be a model, then by all means, she could be a model. The reason I wouldn't want her to be a model is because, now hear me out before you guys are like, oh, why not? Is because I've witnessed this with my eyes where women value themselves, not knowing, but they do, they value themselves off of their beauty. And it's no secret that beauty fades. And I don't want my daughter to think because she's older that her value is no longer as valuable as the girl that's 20. And I don't want her walking into this world and going to doctors or seeing things and trying to take shortcuts into holding back on her age when she should be absorbing. I want my daughter to be a bottle of wine. The, the older she gets, the better she gets. Mm. And that could only happen if I train her that her mind is beautiful and endless. So she could be only as valuable as she wants her mind to be. So that's where I want to get that at. So I would train my son to have the same mentalities. Yeah, I mean, uh, dudes obviously are the same way we we associate like being fit and having a six pack and pecs and shoulders 100%. and with there's beauty. nothing wrong with that yeah. there's nothing wrong with my daughter <laughs> getting fit and having her body to look well she could be a fitness model mm -hmm. i just want her to make sure that her mental game is proper so that way if she is a sport strilly like whatever model type of thing a sports strilly sorry my tongue is twisted yeah, i was in I vegas love those guys sports strilly models yeah she wants to be a sports strilly model <laughs> she could just you know have uh, Jessica Alba is a perfect example. Oh, yeah, she's fire. She's absolutely fire. She's absolutely gorgeous, but her mind is beautiful too. Now she's mm -hmm. endless. Now people respect her when she walks. She could be 80 years old and people are still going to say Jessica Alba, Jessica Alba. Same Jessica thing Alba. with like Angelina Jolie. So I'm saying there's no shame in the game. If you want to rock your body, then rock your body, but also remember that your mind is the best part of your mm -hmm. body. Um, but, but jumping back into the last conversation, I was watching my video back and there's a lot of things. It's funny because a lot of people were DMing me saying that they learned a lot from my vlog. I'm not the vlogs, the podcast, mm -hmm. our podcast. Yeah. And I was like, wow, it's kind of funny how real we are because I learned something from our podcast. What'd you learn? Sorry, I'm going to burp. Um, <laughs> two things. <laughs> One. I there's a clip of me going, yeah, fucking judge. Yeah, yeah that, that yeah, was yeah. a really funny statement. And nobody came at me with a yeah. negative vibe. But this past week, I have been burying myself in my Bible. We actually had a, uh, a Bible study at my house. And I, I really, I really resent that comment that I made because that, yeah, you judge. 
Yes, because I, I don't judge. And all my friends know I don't judge. Well, I, we all judge naturally. I really know. I try not to. I mean, naturally, yeah, but I, I don't want people to think it's okay to judge. And I'll tell you why. It's because in the Bible, it does say, whoever you uh, judge, I will measure by the way you judge. So basically, if I'm judging people left and right, I'm going to be judged on the same measure that I judged everybody else. So that's mm -hmm. why I take pride on not judging people. That's one. And that's what I learned off of our... But we all judge people because we all have our values and morals that we grow up with. 100%. I'm not saying uh, quit it right now, cold turkey. Yeah. But it's it, I, I pride myself on one thing is I look at other people's perspectives. How many times have I been like, okay, dude, but hear me out. What about their perspectives? Every mm -hmm. single one of my friends know that yeah. I do that. It's because you cannot be so ignorant into thinking that your ways of living is the only way of living. You have to understand that people go through heartbreaks on uh, business. They go through relationships that you've never been through. So you don't understand their point of view and you got to respect it. You don't have to agree with it, but you right. got to respect it. <clears throat> um, and another thing I want to change, I got to stop swearing. <laughs> I swear so well, much. Here's the thing. I want to talk about this because every episode that I've uploaded has immediately been demonetized and I don't understand why. That's why sometimes I'll upload them late. Um, and people are like, oh, the upload the podcast is not about money. Well, we, we're putting in That's work. That's not why I want to. I don't care. Well, no, about the we're putting in work. Like we no, should it's get not, paid. No, it's really for not it. the reason why I want to. Because yeah, Mark will call me, and be like, dude, we gotta stop swearing, man. I'm like <laughs> sitting here on my laptop for four hours trying to edit this stuff. I have it, to edit out all the swear words, then I upload it, and then I appeal the demonetization, and then finally after a day it goes away. But it's so it, it, that's not why I want to stop swearing. What I want to do is stop swearing because I had an argument with my mom because my mom's like, how could you? be so about the Bible, but you swear all the time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mom, because well, who, swearing who, in the Bible, like, yeah. So who I, says that a swear word's a bad word? So we, exactly. Why? right? Okay. So check this out. Let me give you an example that I figured this out while watching the podcast, bro. Like I literally taught while I'm watching myself, <laughs> I learned from myself. So shout out to George Janko at George Janko. Um, <laughs> Only George Janko can learn from George Janko. Dude, that's how you know you're wistful. <laughs> I made a new word. Wistful. Um, I'm watching the podcast, and so I got an argument with my mom, just to backtrack, because I was like, I don't think swearing exists, because what if the word f**k to me... Oh, thanks. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean just what time is it? We'll, like, we'll, we'll speed through this part. This part, yeah. I'm going to swear so I can give you examples. <laughs> so the word f**k to me is like hanging out, right? Yeah, yeah. Or like, oh, dude, that's f**king crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the word, the F word, I'll just say F word. Thank right? you. <laughs> the F word is, it's a dirty word. Mm -hmm. to other people so i tell my mom how is it a sin if i'm using it in a, in a non-aggressive way because it says in the bible if you swear to your neighbor but i'm not using it in a swear like right, right. in a way so like that's not a sin but then i'm watching myself back and i look like such an idiot because i'm sitting here with the same tongue that's in my mouth talking about how i'm trying to do good in life and how i'm following christ mm -hmm. and then the next i'm just like yo <laughs> say that for so god's like yo just stop talking about me if you're gonna swear so much right so I'm literally sitting there. I'm like, yo, how can I be setting an example to kids that are listening when I'm just dropping F-bombs all the way? Because here's the thing, right? Yeah. Qu well, question. no, actually, I don't want to swear as much anymore because I saw the mom. Uh, she commented on the podcast. She's like, I really like your advice. And I take out clippets to show my eight-year-old son. But I can't let him listen to the whole thing because you guys swear too much and you say too listen, much provocative mom, stuff. We're going to fix that. I swear. <laughs> you'll never f***ing hear a word out of our mouth. I'm just kidding. I'm oh, sorry, last time. That's, you guys, we're, we're a fun comedy show. Um, but anyway, so Mark wanted to bring up something dark for the podcast. That's his idea. Go ahead, Mark. Bring it up. Which one? The Epstein murder? You know you know, he's on a dark like rant when he goes, which one? Dude, because All a lot of- All positive things comes from me. Just throwing no, that no, out No, no, no. A lot of controversial stuff happened this past week, and you, you can't not talk about it because everyone's talking about it. What's his name again? Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein? Je I don't know. Jeff's, Jeffrey. Jepstein. Let's just say Jeff. Je it's called Jepstein. Jepstein. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you, straight point, blank, point, pew, pew. do you think they murdered him? Yes. Ooh. Give me goosebumps. Is Basically, if you guys aren't familiar, I don't, I'm not too familiar with the story, but this guy was on Suicide Watch, and he did some bad things, and he had a lot of dirt on some politicians, and he got caught, and then apparently died by suicide while in his jail cell and the so cameras weren't the working cameras, the security guards the security weren't guards there. weren't there and they took him off of suicide watch and it just doesn't add up i don't really know too much about it el pop el, what, uh, who's the oh they said something about el chapo being el chapo was in there he was in the same is he, cell it, yeah and then they moved him to some somewhere else i don't know if you guys are familiar with it i'm not too educated on it to talk about it but i do think based on those factors that it's just that ain't a coincidence, man. 
But also, all I, all I gotta say is this: I'm not gonna say anything but this. I don't know um, this man, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any type of way. But I think our our government, bro, they're gangsters, man. <laughs> and I swear they ran it up like, "Yo, snitches get stitches," yeah. and they were like, "We're not having that shit." And it ends here. And who's gonna talk back to the government? Raise your hand in this room. Are you gonna talk back to the government? Nope. Not me. We get in trouble with YouTube, man. Yeah. <laughs> They're like crushing us with the algorithm. You think yeah. we're gonna talk about the government? No. Next conversation. No Let's move Next forward. Next conversation. Did you see the YouTuber that is up in outroar by the public for smacking her dog around? Yeah, here's my question. Yeah. How do you accidentally upload a video of you hitting your dog? Do you think she did that to like get the part of me thought that for a second. Part of me thought, hey, maybe she did this. So she could draw some eyeballs, some controversy, because I don't, I just don't understand how you accidentally leave that edit in, and upload it. But, and here's the thing: even if it was an accident, how do you, why do you have a rough draft version? Yeah, <laughs> like of you smacking your dog. You gonna send it to your friends? Like, hey, you guys, check this out. I smacked my dog. Yeah, but that's the rough version. Don't show anyone. Like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, and here's another thing: I'm Here, gonna be, I'm gonna be honest. I, when I, when I, if I had a dog and he did like. Bad things if he pooped on the floor, I'd smack mm. his butt and, or, or maybe put his face in the poop. So it could be yeah. like, yo, don't do this. Discipline. Yeah, discipline. But smacking your dog and spitting on them, that's that yeah. you jumped them. You you're you jumped them. That that the, wasn't a the part that, that really got me was when she spit on him. I was like, Jesus, that's the most degrading thing that you could like spitting on your dog. You know what else, Mark, I'm gonna bring up? So I stopped because I have a cat named Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> And I would smack his bum, mm -hmm. right, when he does bad things. Yeah. And this motherfucker thinks, oh, start, dang it. This, so I'm learning. This motherfucker <laughs> thinks I play with him now. So when I do it, he, like, plays with me. Yeah. So now I have to squirt him with water when I'm trying to discipline him. Well, I used to do that with my dog. We would play, and I would, like, hit him, and exactly. he'd, like, bite my arm. And exactly. I'd, like, you but know, she like, smacked him yeah, yeah. aggressively, yeah, yeah. right? So she, if she and smacks him. she, like, buried him into the ground. Yes, and he kept coming back for more because he thinks he's playing. So mm -hmm. how many times do you think she's done this yeah. to the point where the dog's, like, okay with her beating? Well, here's the thing. Here's what she dogs did. are loyal, man. Yeah what, yeah, what she did was very, very wrong. She, she the, has some type of issue, and I don't That's want, the thing that I wanted to bring up. I wanted to bring up the fact, like, Everyone's like saying, delete her YouTube channel, cancel her. This girl doesn't deserve to be this, this, and that. I think we that that's, stop doing I that. think that that's very unfair. Yeah. I think clearly this girl has some anger issues. As you guys saw, she would she hit her dog and then she would go and put on her happy face for the vlog and then hit her dog again and then put on her happy face. Yeah. That's that's not okay. It's like psychologically that's something damaging. something there. Um, but I like what you say. I don't th now we're in our generation we're like a witch hunt and we're like trying to burn these people down. Yeah, like, I think it's because we want to feel so much better about ourselves that other people are screwing up in life. And it's like, "Oh, cancel her, delete her YouTube account." Like, but here's the thing too, if you draw comparisons, for example, of controversies that other celebrities have done, for example, R. Kelly, uh, the stuff he did, or Michael Jackson, the stuff that came out about him, yeah. or or Harvey Weinstein, all these people. No one's out there saying you know what? Take down every single one of their movies. Take down oh, every no, they, single they, one they of their they songs. Are, they are. They are. But you're, time, dude, right? I mean, when the R. Kelly stuff was happening, I was at the gym and there was a class and there was like a, a group of 50 women listening to Ignition dancing. I'm like, these girls have no idea. That's Ignition. <laughs> Fresh out the kitchen. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I agree with not. But I think, we, dude, we all obviously make mistakes in 100%. life. We do things that, but I don't think that one mistake should dictate your whole life. Your whole life. Exactly. Listen, I am a. I'm a firm, firm. That's why I don't believe in the death penalty. Mm -hmm. I don't. I. I believe everybody should have a way to. That, remember, we had a conversation where I was like, I don't. Be, I wouldn't be able to take somebody's life. I don't want to. Right. I, I obviously have the capability to do it, but if somebody killed my mom, and I had the chance to kill them, I don't know. In the time being, maybe I would. I'm not sure, but. I know that deep down in a, in, a, in a calm state of mind, I would want them to be able to repent and live a better life mm -hmm. and figure out and make that mistake and figure out how to fix that mistake. So I, I hate when people gather such masses to like burn this person down because here's the thing. Well, man, here, like, well here's the thing too. We're, we're familiar with it with, with Logan, what happened with Logan and people yeah. don't like, yeah, he made a very big mistake. But look how much of a better person he is now. He's, he's, he's made the changes and he's learned from his mistake but also when the whole entire world is coming at you and hating you and, and punny, like, like saying basically like, go f yourself. I'm sorry. I fucking, it's, it's hard. It's hard not to swear. 
like that takes a toll on her as well. And it's interesting because I was actually in the sauna at the gym and I heard this guy talking about it and I paused my phone because he was talking to some other guy and he, uh, he dated her for a month or something like that. And he's like, yeah, all these people are texting me saying, I can't believe you dated that piece of shit, this, this and that. And so I stopped and I started to talk to him. I'm like, Hey man, like I just overheard that. And I heard about, you know, what she did and I saw the video. He's like, yeah, man, all these people, all my friends are like coming down on me for, for dating such a terrible person. And I was like, Hey man, don't let like what her actions did or well, don't let her actions dictate like who you are as a person. Cause the same thing happened to me when Logan did his, um, thing in Japan, I got text messages from people back in you know my hometown and they're like, I can't believe you were roommates with that piece of shit. I can't believe he's your friend, all this. I'm like, how does that, like, I feel bad for the dude because people are coming down on him just for like. And he's not a bad, like, we've seen him do so much good. And so that's what we're trying to say is like, you shouldn't come down on people because let me give you an example. God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. This girl is your daughter and she's, she has a mental issue right now and maybe she needs a therapist to fix it. And it's an easy fix and she can move on if she asks for help. Mm -hmm. Say you didn't know your daughter was going through that issue and she's doing her YouTube thing and you have no idea. And she does that and the whole world drops on her. And now you're in the fix of like, oh, I want to help my daughter. And then you come into your room to find that she took her own life because she couldn't handle the hate that she was getting. If her ex-boyfriend of three years ago is getting hate, just imagine how much hate she's getting Mm -hmm. in school and how much maybe her boyfriend just broke up with her because of it or all this stuff just because of one mistake that she can move on from. She, yeah, she smacked the dog. The dog's still alive. He's breathing. We could take the dog away from her if that's that big of a case. But is it enough for us to keep pushing to the point where she's like, you know what? I've messed up so bad. There's no forgiving myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's bad. And and, and another comparison I want to draw is how we as a society, we seem to care so much more right now about um, animals than actual humans, in my opinion. Like when I, when you see, what do you mean by that? Just like you go on World Star, man, and you see people like girls fighting and beating the f- out of each other, and we're just beating sitting the what out of each other, the shit out of each other, mm-hmm. and we're just sitting there like sending it to our friends, tagging our friends, I, laughing I, I about it. I know why that's different, though. Like curb stomping, knocking people out. Like, oh, watch this dude get knocked out. Ha ha ha! So funny. I, I know why though. Why? Because well, if you watch those videos, ninety nine point nine percent of the videos is not some guy walking up to somebody not doing anything. Mm-hmm. It starts off with the, the, both of them talking itch to each other and like they're pushing each other and they're like oh, 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 oh. and then one of them gets their ass beat. But an animal abuse is they're not asking for it. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? They're not walking up going whoa, 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 and you're like, what are you saying? And like hit him in the yeah, face. Yeah. So it's kind of like you're. It, it would be a comparison of us picking on somebody that's disabled. That's like. They can't defend themselves. Mm-hmm. Why are you trying to attack them like that? Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. But I still don't like the fact that we like laugh about people getting beat up. Dude, I feel like everybody's attracted to negative vibes. It's bad. Yeah. I and mean, it's just like the media what, yeah. and everything that we put out there in, in the world is just, that's the shock factor, right? But it's become so normal. That's that's the scariest thing, it's dude. It's so bad, When man. you see on the news, mass shooting, and then the next day, mass shooting, for example, El Paso and Dayton, it's just like... It's, I remember it's become the first normal. time. I remember the first time I heard about the mass shooting. The whole weekend, I was sitting in my room thinking, "How could somebody do this?" And I would literally just sit there and sit there and sit there. And I would just I was in the shower thinking about it. I was walking around thinking about. It. Everybody was talking about. It. Everybody was so upset. Now it's like in our feed, and we're like, "Oh, God be another with your family." One. Yeah, and that's one. it. And we move on. It's because it's, it's it's getting to the point where it's like, it's sad. But that's but the thing, we're dude. I'm to it now. It, you know, Did you see the New York thing. How uh, uh, a yeah. motorcycle pop and everybody, dude, a motorcycle pop back in the day, we just all look and be like, what is that? And yeah. now people are picking up their children, kicking their shoes off running. Yeah. It's getting bad, man. And like, even when I was in college, this is the reason I didn't go into the media. Every time they wanted me to like lead off a news story was about negativity, fires, all that stuff. Like that was what I was taught. I was like, this man, like, I don't want to be in a negative in this frick this i don't want to be in a negative environment like for my career i want to be able to be positive and to be honest bro like all this negativity all this drama all this hating uh this person and that person stirring up controversy and presidential debates and all that whatnot it's like it's almost become the new normal where it's like yeah of course it's not even the shock factor anymore that's that's they've used it so much like Just like scandals, like they're not even a shock factor. Like this person, like Liam Hensworth and and Miley Cyrus get divorced. 
They like, did? Yeah. When? They're getting a divorce. No. But it's just like, that's normal. Wait, is that real? Yeah. No. You know, Bradley Cooper. It's like, you don't even, it's it's not as shocking as stuff used to be, you know? Like, because it's just happened so frequently now that it, I don't even know. I wonder why they're getting a divorce. I don't know. I guess there's some photos around going around of her kissing. What, what's the Jenner's ex-wife too? Yeah. She was kissing a girl? Yeah. Um, on a boat in Italy or something? I don't know. Brody Jenner's ex-wife. They got a divorce a week ago. Miley Cyrus and Liam Hensworth are getting a divorce a week later. And they were seen kissing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the story about it. Miley, uh, email me at gejanko at gmail.com if by any chance you're watching this podcast. I would love to know the tea on this. Oh, I thought you were going to ask her out. I was like... No, no, no. <laughs> she cheated on her husband. I was like, well, that's I the issue jump right there. Her. Like, yeah. see, people were trying to swoop in. No, no um, I've never. Yourself. My next door neighbors, I swear they will do anything in their power to get me evicted out of this apartment, and I will not allow it to happen. I got a complaint this weekend. I shot a skit on my Instagram. You guys can check it out, at Mark Donor. And I shot, and I put all these lights in the hallway, two of these lights, to film my, my shot. And my neighbors walked by and they stepped over the cords and they went to their room, whatever. I get a freaking email from the leasing office saying that there's been a complaint about me using video equipment, specifically lighting in the hallway. This They've complained seven times about noise, which I understand. They've complained about my lights being in the hallway. They've complained about me putting boxes when I moved in in the trash chute. What? Do these people, next door neighbors, I hope you listen to this. Do you have anything better to do with your life than complain about stuff I'm doing in my life? Why do you think they, they think got I'm, mad at his lights, too? Dude, can I say something so you guys see these lights behind me? Pan up. At nighttime, I put them to pink, so the whole apartment's pink and it looks pretty dope. Apparently, they complained that my pink lights were illuminating to the outside of the building and it bothered them. <laughs> my, like, that's to me, like, that's like telling God to stop shining the sun in your apartment. God, please stop shining the sun in my apartment. It bothers me. Like, what is wrong with these people? Have you ever tried to confront them? No. I would have. And this is what I said to the leasing office. I'm like, dude, they're making it uncomfortable for me to live here because they're complaining about me so much to you guys. And I have to see them every day. I walk past them. So I'm uncomfortable living here knowing that they're pussies and can't talk to me to my face. Why don't you just talk to them? What am I supposed to say? Like, what, do you hey, have anything better to do with your life than complain about my life? Yeah, why not? Like, why are people so concerned with how I'm living my life? Why don't you life? just say that to them? How is it affecting them that my lights are in the hallway? How does that, like, does that ruin your day that bad? Like, oh my God, you guys are, like, they're at the dinner table. They're like, you're not going to believe what happened today. <laughs> so we got out of the elevator, right? And we were walking down the hallway and there was two lights in the hallway. And we actually had to step over uh, one extension cord. <laughs> no way. You should tell the leasing office. Like, is that your conversation at dinner? Oh, man. Yeah, you're really flustered by this. Because it's uncomfortable for me to live next to these people because I can't do anything. My friend just asked me if he could smoke on my balcony. I'm like, I don't, I don't think you, this is a smoke-free building. I said, don't do that because I think they'll call and be like, nah. Nah. He's, sm he's smoking. Nah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're literally trying to find anything and everything to get me out of here. Anyways, also from the weekend, what'd you do? You went to Vegas. Oh, my God. How was that? You look like you had a blast. Oh, man. I did have a <clears> blast. Um. Why'd you go to Vegas, by the way? Vegas is Sin City. We just talked about this. Yeah. yeah You've yeah, been yeah. to Vegas two times in the last three weeks. Dude, I know. But <laughs> hey, I didn't do anything bad. Like, I never did. Yeah. We hung out. Uh, I was at the DJ booth with uh, Kygo. He was, I love Kygo's music, by mm -hmm. the way. He's amazing. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. And his stage performance is just great as well. Um, so it was Little Belle's birthday, mm -hmm. um, a.k.a. Shauna. I call her Little Belle. But yeah, it was her birthday. She's 21. So I thought it'd be fun if I'd take her for the weekend and just. Kind of like Looked like you guys had fun. You went for race Ferraris. You yeah, went, you stayed at Azadi's house. Yeah, you we took went a to helicopter. A nice dinner. You did a helicopter yeah, had dinners, breakfast. Did you guys gamble at all? Um, yes, I gambled for really? the first time in like five years. How much did you lose? I didn't lose anything. Really? I, so I went in there and um, she put in like a dollar because I'm we're, I don't I don't want to promote gambling. I hate gambling. Like, <laughs> yeah. I really really absolutely hate gambling. Um. Because I've I've lost a lot of family members of mine mm -hmm. have lost their life to gambling, so um, I purposely brought out one hundred dollars. That's it, yeah, one hundred. Yeah. Um, and I said, win or lose, I'm over this, right? 
Um, I did it because it's her 20, 21st. You know what I mean? Like she's going to go to Vegas. I wanted her to experience So you were her life. sugar daddy. You're like, hey, here's a hundo. No, no, no. That hundo was for me. Oh. She, <laughs> she took her money. It was funny. She didn't want to take my money because she wanted to gamble her own money. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she did $1. I did 100 uh, I put it on the blackjack table and I got up 200 literally with two hands. And I was like, I'm out. I was just like, I played two hands. I left. <laughs> so I put it in. I won. Uh, I lost one. And then I put in one more. I won that. And then I doubled it down, won that. Took it off the table and walked out. The girl's like, "This is the fastest I've ever seen." Yeah, gamble. that's that's hard to do for most people. I have a. I, we, Can yeah, I we say something? Addicted, yeah. I don't even know if I want to share this story. I started one time with like a thousand dollars. Oh, I was standing next to you. Guys, I'm not kidding you. Ah, oh, this is a bad story. Is it the one that I was standing next to you? Where I go, Mark? No, this is a separate away. time. Oh Jesus! I got up. I think in front of me, I had like twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars. <laughs> And I lost all of that. Stop. Yeah. You were up twenty five thousand. Yeah. But here's my here's my thought process. It wasn't my money, so I was like, ah, oh, screw it. Just gonna bet, you know, a thousand a hand, thousand a hand. Yeah, it didn't didn't go well. You were. Up it's sickening, bro. It's, I'm sick to my stomach. Twenty five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I said, I don't like gambling. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I was betting next to people who had a hundred thousand dollars in front of them, so it was like more of. I think that messed with my head a little bit. Cause you think you're gonna be like, oh, I'm up twenty five thousand. I'm gonna get up a hundred thousand, and I'm gonna make a million. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't work like that. Do what George does and walk away when you make some money. What I did, but at the end of the day, I, I put didn't that lose hundred dollars as soon as I won that first hand. I took the hundred dollars, put it in your pocket, put it in my pocket. Yeah. So I was like, whatever. And I you lose played now. with your winnings. Yeah. That's what I did. I put the thousand in my pocket and I played with the twenty five thousand. Yeah, but I would have taken twenty thousand <laughs> at least and put it away. And yeah. No, yo, I walked away paying at twenty thousand. Hey, dollars. you learn from mistakes in this life, or you you know just learn from our mistakes. And yeah, learn from our mistakes. Listen to what, that's what we're here for. We're, we're here to tell you the mess ups we have in life. Um. My int- my weekend was pretty interesting. Talk to me. Yo, I saw your Insta stories. It looked so, insane. Yeah, Friday night I went out, didn't have a single sip oh, of b- alcohol. Oh, by the way, I just want to call you out. What? Um uh, being an asshole. Why? Because so many things I always tell Mark, I uh, let's hey, let's leave this out of the podcast. You know, let's leave this out of the podcast. Let's just do this or hey, you know what? Let's not do this. It brings up that I'm in a relationship literally the weekend that I'm taking Bell out to <laughs> I was gonna bring that up. I was like, yeah, he's like, I'm taking I'm leaving my relationship offline and I, I never said anything in but all every, weekend. He's I'm like, getting DMs all weekend like, oh we know it's her. I'm like, oh, Yeah, well you're leaving your you're not like posting photos and stuff like that and being like it's not like your brand. Like it became my brand that I was the relationship guy. You're just sharing Instagram stories of your weekend with her. Yeah. It's I don't like, yeah, I, I it is it's just what it is. Yeah, know? it is what it is. But anyways, Friday night went out, held myself accountable, didn't drink, was at the club, which was actually very nice sitting and watching everyone drink and me not drinking. I felt good about myself. Woke up the next day, felt really great. Um, went to this amazing house. Oh my God, that house. So my is buddy so he bought cool. a he renovated he built a new house. He's a he's That's a, his house? He's in real estate. No, he built it. They're, they're selling it for $15 million. Like one of the Jonas brothers looked at the house, but I guess there's not enough privacy. It is the most insane house, 17,000 square feet. If you guys saw my Instagram stories, it's it's got a, a spa in it. It's got a movie theater, a bar, a wine cellar. I love how like, one of the Jonas brothers looked at it. You know you're on a cool wave when you're like, I'm looking at a $15 million home, but it, eh, it's not enough privacy. Like, well, there wasn't a gated community. It was in Han- It's in Hancock Park. Which is, you know, just a normal street. <clears throat> Absolutely insane house. Went there, hung out. Everyone was drinking. I didn't drink. And then I went to my buddy's birthday party down in Venice. Everyone was drinking. I didn't drink. And then somehow I end up at Paris Hilton's house. Oh, smash. So, of course, I drank. Because <laughs> how many times can you say you did that? But was she, was she partying with you? She was there. So, and yeah, you have to party with Paris <clears throat> I got to say, bro, she's probably one of the coolest celebrities i've ever met really very down to earth very humble just has a conversation like this um yeah every other celebrity i met well mostly dudes are assholes and think they're the shit but she's a she's kind of one of the one of the only female celebrities i've met like to that scale yeah. of celebrity and i thought she was i really met uh, i met kylie jenner yeah um and i was shocked on how down to earth she was really yeah i actually took her dog from her hands at uh somebody's house that we know i'm not gonna mention who it is but i took the <laughs> I was like, I saw her puppy and I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. And I took it from her hands and I was like, whose dog is this? And she's like, oh, mine. And I looked up and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, hey, how you doing? And we like chit-chatted for like, I literally like 45 seconds maybe, but like she was so sweet and she wasn't like, yo, get 
Get your hands yeah, off my yeah. dog. Yeah. And dude, she's not only famous, she's a freaking billionaire. Oh, well, I'm actually, I'm really mad at myself because really? I did drink and I've been trying to hold myself accountable and not drink. And I caved, man. And it frustrates me. Yeah, a lot. but here's the thing, man. You're going to probably cave eventually. Might as well do it with But it's been a week. <laughs> it's been, been a week. A week. <laughs> it's not a long time. So I'm very upset with myself. I'm going to I'm going to push myself to not do that cuz I felt like shit the whole next day. We went to the club. Um and I'm not going to say who we went to the club with, but the guy was Miley Cyrus. Not my not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of him. Um Really? Anyways, Wait, can then, you say who it is so I can hear it and you just beep it out? <clears throat> Oh <laughs> uh, man So anyways We go back to this after party And I want to talk about this they, I don't know what it is bro The first three Four years that I've No it's been It's my fourth year living here The first three years That I've lived in LA I've never seen any drug use I've Every single weekend There is a serious problem In LA right now With cocaine No that's always been there You just don't I, go out With those type of people Why is mixing it Mixing in with different crews Dude it's bad yeah, well, our crew never does that stuff. Yeah. So you never see it. But why Why is it so common? You know what it is. I, I figured this out. A lot of actors do it, too, and a lot and of And I wasn't going to say that, too. but at the after party, I was seeing some actors that I looked up to doing it, and I'm just like... But you know why? It's because um, when you get really, really drunk and you do it, I guess, it, like, sobers you up. So I guess they, like, bounce back. No? Am I wrong? Yeah, it's it's like a... That's what I, I've heard, but that's the, the addictive thing about it, I guess, it only lasts, like, 10 to 20 minutes and I'm watching people do this shit every 10 minutes and I'm like really they're offering it to me and I'm like no are you stupid I even said that I go nope never done cocaine never will and they're like yeah it's probably better that you don't try it I'm like hell yeah why are you doing it like you're, you're, you're doing it every five minutes right in front of me you in know, front of everyone no one cares ta- they're just doing you, it in front of a whole party did I, did I t- talk about this on the podcast <clears throat> how the teachers thought I was on cocaine I, I, everyone always thinks you're on cocaine no I'm being serious like they, <laughs> did, I, did I talk about this on this no nah. did I, I didn't talk about this no nah. Bro, I got sent to the office because they dead ass thought I was doing cocaine. I have really bad allergies and I'm really hyper and I kept going like this because I have bad allergies. I have really bad allergies, especially in Arizona. The mm-hmm. pollen there is insane. So the guys like, and I'm like bouncing around, like just talking to my friends. And I love, how much do you always see me drink a Coca-Cola? Always. Like, I love, love Coke. So I love <laughs> Coke. I turn to my buddy and I go, F- I'll do anything for Coke right now. <laughs> and the teacher goes, excuse me? And I go... But by the way, mind you, this is seventh grade. <laughs> seventh grade. I did not know what cocaine was in seventh yeah, grade. Yeah, yeah. So she goes, what did you just say? She pulled up a guy and she goes, do you want a Coke? And my dumb ass is like, yeah, you know, like I, I love some right now. She's like, okay, could you come with me? And then she took me to the office and her, the nurse, I remember the nurse, the therapist, and the principal sat me down and they called my mom and they said, that mom, my mom need to come down. Um, but they, before they wanted to bring my mom involved because, you know, they might be, sca- I might be scared of my parents or something. And this is like, they're trying to teach a kid not mm-hmm. to do drugs. They asked me, so how long have you been doing this for? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm like, a, you know, while, you know, <laughs> like, so I just sat there and they're like, okay, um, well, we, we need to inform your parents, you know, cause they need to know. And I'm like, yeah, no, my mom and dad, they know. <laughs> I'm like, but so I'm thinking to talk about Coke and my mom only let me have it on the weekend. So it's like, not all the time though. And they know that it's not good for me. <laughs> so that's what I said. So their eyes lit up. They're like, oh my God, his parents are like, maybe they're like drug addicts or something like yeah. that. So finally they're like, they're like in, you know, it's really bad for your health, it's bad for your nose. And so I, I started thinking like, cause it's the, like the sugar or something like right. that. And I was like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I know it's bad, but like, I don't do it all the time. And I, I just really, I, I think it's tasty. And they're like, yeah, but you know, you, you know, they're sitting there. So finally they're like, cocaine and they finally use the word cocaine uh-huh. and i'm like i'm like no, i'm like no 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 i don't know what cocaine is but i i'm talking about coca-cola <laughs> and they got pissed they thought i was like messing with them mm-hmm. like they thought i was just like trying to play a joke on them and like you know we're gonna call your t- your, your your mom over right now so they got my mom on the phone and my mom goes are you guys i guess stupid <laughs> my son is in the seventh grade why would he know what cocaine is and they're like oh they're like we thought he was playing a joke on it she goes no send my kid back to class before i go over there and kick your guys' ass <laughs> Teach my kids about drugs. She's like, he's talking about Coke. He loves Coke. He drinks Coke all the time. Send him back to class. So they sent me back to class, and I was sitting there. They, my friends are like, what'd you do? I go, I don't know. I guess from now on, I'll just drink Pepsi. <laughs> I was like, Less problems. Hilarious. Yeah, I want to talk about this because I've been listening. <laughs> it's funny you brought up teachers. I've been listening to like a lot of rap music uh, when I'm at the gym, besides the motivational stuff. What is it with every rapper saying 
that their teachers told them they weren't going to amount to anything. Why the, is that? Teachers the, are assholes, bro. But why is that the story of every single rapper? Like, do teachers really do that? Do they really say that? I swear to God. And I never swear to God unless I'm 100% on this. I came up, you know my song. I did it, this other one that, like, up in this club and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. So, in school, I was hated really bad. <laughs> but not only did the kids hate me, the teachers hated me. I was, pra- dude, let me put it this way. This girl, I'm not going to mention her name because I'm not petty like that, but I was like, Practicing my autographs, which by the way, none of you ever ask me for, so it's kind of a waste of time. <laughs> you guys ask me for selfies, but you know, <laughs> that's cool too. But um, I, I was practicing my autographs and she took it from me and she ripped it up and she goes, Why don't you focus on something that's actually going to matter in your life? And I was like, Wow. So then finally, I was like, I'm going to show her, I'm going to make a music video and do all this. So mm-hmm. I did all this, bro, just to prove it to her that I could do this and all that stuff. So shot a music video, performed at Justin Bieber's concert. It was like crazy. I thought everybody was going to love me. They did not love me. In fact, they cranked up the I Hate George, and she played my music video in front of the whole class. Then she YouTubed a video of Pots and Pans banging, and she had the whole class. My cousin's laughing because he knows about this. My cousin's here. Um, so uh, she, she basically, sorry, I lost my train of thought. She YouTubed videos of Pots and Pans banging, and she had the class vote what sounded better. And everybody voted pots and pans. Wow. Yeah. What a bitch. Yeah. How are these people teachers if they're talking like this to their students? You, you're I, supposed I to uplift she, them. I, I'm pretty sure she got fired. And not, not in my, I think like five years later, she got fired. She was just an asshole. Dude. Dude, she was, okay, let me, I, okay, this is a good story. And I hope everybody pays attention to this. Can I just say something? Not all teachers are bad people. My mom was a teacher for 36 years. She's a great woman. Why she, would you give an example of a bad teacher? To show that there's not all bad. I was kidding. <laughs> no, my like, mom's a great teacher. I know, I know, but I know she she's listening. She raised an awesome son. Yeah, a freaking awesome son. Yeah. Uh, but this is a true Shout st- out, mom. You can talk now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was substitute, not substitute. Was it was student aid, like where you're a teacher's assistant? Is it called student? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was a student aid. By the way, teachers hated George not only because he was a talented singer, but he also talked hacked, all the time. Talked all the time and hacked into the, the no, grade no, system with the substitute teacher and changed his grades for the whole class. Yeah, that's true, but they, they didn't know about them. that. They never yeah, found out about no that. No wonder they hated you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they <laughs> definitely hated me. Anyways, continue. And they had good reasons to hate me, for sure. But then also, they had really good reasons to love me, and they didn't. Yeah. Um, but this girl, I don't know if she's still working or not, and I really, really, and I never hope people lose their job, but I really, really hope this girl loses her job. Um, there's a kid in class, and he was sleeping, and every day he would sleep. And But he was a freshman, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was a senior. And I was just taking this class because I needed points to graduate, right? So I'm watching this kid. like George Jenko, senior, being in a freshman class. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because I I skipped that math class. So they just put me as like an aide. So I didn't have to take the math class. I was just assistant. Mm. Yeah, whatever. So I'm helping this. And I would always come up to him, like kind of nudge him, and he would wake up. He, He was a very quiet kid, never said anything, right? Yeah. So I basically was sitting down one time and sh- he raises his hand. Now, mind you, I'm not going to lie. The kid was weird. He did a lot of weird things. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to like hide wait, wait, stuff wait, in the you're story. you're judging. No, he was weird. Let me explain why. <laughs> like he would go to the hand sanitizer and, and do his hand sanitizer and just literally go and he would like sniff it to like kind of get high off of the hand mm-hmm. sanitizer. And I was like, yo. But he did it like four or five times through the class that the teacher had to take away the hand sanitizers. Like it was, the yeah. kid was like kind of off of his mental game for sure. For sure. <laughs> And he would always fall asleep sleep class, and he was very messy. He just looked like he never showered. He was just a really, he was a wreck. And he's, he raised his hand. He's like, may I use the bathroom? And then she's like, yeah, but if you're not back in one minute, I'm going to lock the door on you. So he was gone, and obviously he was gone for longer than one minute. Yeah, who can go to the bathroom in one minute? Come on. Yeah. And she went and locked the door. Wow. And everybody in the class started laughing at him. And then he came, you know how like in the doors they have like those little window things mm-hmm. where you can see and he's sticking his face in and he's like trying to open, he's like waving and everybody's just laughing and laughing and laughing. And my heart broke and I was like, yo, and I got up and she's like, if you open that door, you're going to be stuck out with him with him. And I turned to him, I'm like, yo, could you just stop being a bitch? I was like, you need to stop. I was like, you are teaching these kids to bully people. And she's like, did you just call me a bitch? Why don't you walk down with me to the office? I go, how about we walk together so I could tell the principal what you're doing in front of these kids? I would love to have that happen. I'm like, you know what? In fact, this is my last time in this class. I'm done. You could fail me. You could do whatever you want, but we're done. We're over. And I opened the door. And I'm like, go sit down. And he sat down and everybody was quiet. And she even got quiet. And I sat down and this was the last day I was ever in her class. But I walked up to him after in the hallway. I go, hey, man, I defended you today, but I can't keep defending you. You keep up. Like, stop it. 
Like, stop. You need to focus. You need to do your homework. Stop huffing the uh, hand sanitizer. <laughs> and stop always walking around. And you could see, like, he's holding back tears. And I'm like, what's up, man? And he's like, hey, man. He's like, I keep falling asleep in classes because I'm always at the hospital with my mom. And I looked at him and I go, what do you mean? And he goes, my mom's sick. So, like, I spend time with her during the day after school. So, I never really have time to sleep. And I, like, fall asleep in class. I don't mean to. He's like, but I don't know how long I'm going to have my mom for. And I broke down crying. Because I was like, not only is he dealing with this at his house, but he's coming to school, mm -hmm. getting made fun of. Because like I had a good man. Yeah, I mean, everybody hated me at my school, but I went home to a loving family and a healthy family. So I didn't give a shit when people made fun of me because I'm like, yeah, you got to go suck it off. I don't care. I'm, right. like, I'm over here. But this guy's getting all this shit in school. And then he has to go home to deal with his problems. So this guy never has a break. And I could not tell you how much I cried on the way home. Like I could not stop crying to think like how... I kept picturing everybody pointing and laughing at him when he's by the door and mm. then him taking that, not yelling at anybody, not screaming at anybody, not fighting anybody, taking his backpack, going home for his dad to drive him to the hospital to spend time with his mom while he has him. Well, it just goes back to what we were saying earlier about how you never know what anyone's going through in their life. You know, everyone's battling something. Everyone has someone going through something where, you, you know, there's like a, I forget what, I was listening to one of motivational things. It says, you're either going into a storm, you're in a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. So that's, that's just the reality of life. Like we're all going through stuff. We're about to go through stuff. We're coming out of going through something. So you got to treat people with love and respect, man. It's crazy. I wonder what that guy's up to now. If you were listening to the podcast, man, hit me up. I miss you. I want to see how you're doing. And if you're not, you know, that's cool. Also, I wanted to, something else I listened or I heard in one of these, uh, motivational things. I love how much you're absorbing from these things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I write it down as I listen to it. And I think this is a really good test of something. And my mom sent me something from someone back in my high school who, who had it all. You know, his dad bought him everything that he wanted. His mom bought him everything he wanted. Never, and everyone was jealous of him, right? He yeah, had yeah, yeah. all the coolest stuff. He had all the nicest stuff, the best equipment when it came to sports, all that. And it's like, what I wrote down here is... Um, if you're listening and your parents give you everything, ask them to stop because it's not going to help you in the real world. Because basically, like, I was never given anything. My parents, I had a very good upbringing, but, like, I always had a job. Um, I worked landscaping with my brother, and then I worked at Boston Mills Brandywine, which is a ski resort in Ohio. And then I went to school, and I still had to pay for everything. You know, I paid off my student loans by myself, all that stuff. And then, like, I look back at people because I came up, uh, I went to an upper middle class school and lived in an upper class middle class neighborhood and a lot of the kids i was so envious that their parents always gave them money and their parents always gave them dope things and i never had that but like a lot of those people still live at home and they're they haven't been able to figure out how to move on how to live their life on their own yeah so it's i think if you're if you're someone that you know either your parents give you everything or you see other parents giving their kids things you need to not be jealous of what the other people are doing because dude, I'm so glad that I had to work for everything I have. Cause like just becoming an adult and being mature and living on my own has taught me so much about responsibility that I'm so grateful that my parents didn't hand, give me a handout. That's a big step. Yeah. There's a lot of, <clears throat> yeah, I, don't, I don't think anybody's going to be waiting in line to like get their stuff removed away from them. But no, yeah. I think, I think that's a power move, dude. If your parents give you a bunch of shit, Ask him to stop. My, I mean, my sister doesn't take anything from her parents. Like, my, her parents, my parents. <laughs> like, nothing. She likes to, like, single-handedly kind of take the world on. I'm more like, if you offer it, I'm taking that shit. <laughs> like, yeah, I've always been that way. You offer it, it's gone. It's mine now. But yeah, it would be. A, it's, a, it's still a big step to say no. But hey, mom, dad, I appreciate you guys looking after me, but I, I really wanted to, to earn this by myself. Yeah. It matures you a lot quicker, and it, it, it preps you for the real world. Because I was super shocked. When I got to the real world, my parents didn't teach me anything about business or taxes or anything like that. So it's like when you have your own business, that's shit you got to learn. It blindsides you. Question. Hmm. What time are we at? So yeah. Want to go in the fan questions? Yep. All right, let's do it. Some of them actually relate pretty good to... Today's podcast? The to yeah, stuff we've talked about already. So I'm excited. I'm just, I, like, I, I love these things now, man. Hi, guys. My name is Gabby. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Love awesome. your podcast. Midwest, baby. My question is, what do you think is more important for success and growth in business and interpersonal relationships? Is it 
IQ or EQ? First female question. Shout out to the girls listening and asking questions. So EQ for me is in mixing. Emotional. Emotional. Oh, gotcha. What do you think is more important in success? I looked it up because uh, I didn't know what EQ was, so I looked it up. Um, but it, it shows that EQ is very, very important in successful people and in leaders because you're able to empathize and understand – you know what your team and your employees are going through and you're you're able to work on fixing that um, I think obviously it helps to be very intelligent have good IQ like in being successful in my business for example knowing things about camera equipment and how to do um, editing and all of those intelligence based things and I guess I don't know I think they're both equally important but in in relationships I don't think intelligence matters in terms of that eq is way more important question hmm. not, not a question sorry the answer to the, my, my answer is eq mm -hmm. I, I think you have to i think learning as you go on that's what i do i don't go into everything knowing exactly what i need to do i think that's where hard work comes in play um i think you're always learning and adapting so you're always going to be learning but you can't be taught <clears throat> empathy and sympathy you right. know what i mean well it, it's 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 something you're taught when you're young yeah exactly when you're developing. Yeah, when you're, yeah. Devel when you're fully developed. Um, I could have easily, and I, and I mean this, I could have easily been a lot more successful right now if I didn't have the empathy and sympathy that I have because mm -hmm. I know that this is kind of like the longer way of getting it is the right way of getting it and not stabbing people in the back or doing the wrong things. But I sleep better at night. And I, yeah. know, I know where my values lie and I'm a lot happier. And I know a lot of people that are more successful are not as happy is because they kind of, you know what? that term you make your own bed so you, if you're building your foundation you are the decision maker on how you want your life to be so you could either kind of build it in a way where it's going to be scandalish mm. scandalish, scandalish. <laughs> yeah two words scandaling <laughs> no. and dishes and moving on hey mark and george i've really enjoyed the podcast recently and i've been making youtube Pause. videos which i believe could possibly so serious i almost like i almost <laughs> got up and like he buttoned up my shirt again like yeah all right he's got a good voice sorry to be a future career however i'm not relying on this i'm deciding on which college to go to it's between two equally good colleges over one's in london where i can make better content and the other one's closer to home so i'll be closer to family which one do you believe i should go to thanks a lot i would say that I know you what you're gonna say I would say go to the one away from home. Yeah. Because it goes you back get, to... You got to leave the nest, man. Yeah. It goes back to what I just said. Living on your own. Going to college is a big monumental step in becoming an adult yep. and not relying on your parents. While they may pay for some of your stuff at college, having to do your own dishes, having to do your laundry, having to make your food, all of those things. Making new friends. Making like, new friends. Yeah. Like that is extremely important in development into the real world. And that's the one thing I took away from college. I, I went to college three hours away from home. So if I wanted to go home, I could still go home. But obviously, I didn't want to drive three hours uh, very frequently. So I was far enough away from home that I learned those adult-like values. And yeah, it helped me out a lot. I think you got, yeah, like he said, you got to leave the nest. <clears throat> you got to leave the nest. Dude, my voice cracks so much. And you swear so much, man. It's crazy. You swear way more than me. No, darn it. I don't. Hi, Mark. Hi, George. You're doing a great job on this podcast. I just had one question. It's a general thing. So I just wanted to know what's your idea on being friends with your ex. Should you be friends with your ex? Is it is it any way good for you? Just wanted your views on it. Uh, hundred percent. I think you could be friends with your ex. I don't think you have to burn a bridge with anybody. Yeah, I'm friends with every single person I've ever talked to. I've never, like, I'm friends with my one ex. They came and visited. She's getting engaged or she's engaged and getting married i don't think it's weird i st i still speak with kylie free like i'm not hanging out with her but like we still talk every once in a while but you don't have there's to be, no hard feelings you don't have to be best friends with them if yeah. it's bad for you be if, cordial yeah i mean here's the thing at the end of the day there's a reason why you guys are not together maybe mm -hmm. that person's not good for your life but you should never burn a bridge right I, I can go up to any person i've ever been with and say what's up nothing no harm so this is a question for George at some parts and also Mark. How, George, how did you go from being like being very sexually driven and having being very horny, to say it bluntly, and then changing that to 
pursuing your faith and being grounded in that because that's a struggle that I have right now and just trying to be the best the best man that God wants me to be. And then for Mark and just yeah, ha- you answer that question first. Damn. This is like uh, this is this is I I have the perfect answer for it, but it's going to be making me super vulnerable to answer it, but you know what? If God wants me to answer, I'm just going to answer. I had a I had an addiction to pornography. Wow, you're going there. Yeah. Cool. I had an addiction to pornography. Um and I got a girlfriend and in the moment while I had the girlfriend, I realized that God gave me an opportunity right now to have this relationship and have a blessed one with it. So the devil works hard, man, and he doesn't sleep. So mm-hmm. My dad says the same thing. The devil is everywhere. Yeah, he works hard, man. So you, let me give you an example. When you're watching pornography, and if anybody who's out there is watching pornography, mind you, if you don't feel comfortable with this conversation, please turn away. Like This is a very, very open and hard conversation for me to talk about. I'm getting antsy just <laughs> yeah. talking about it, but... I had a conversation with Nate. Mm-hmm. Our buddy is really, 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 really all about the Bible. And I told him, I go, I don't think pornography is that big of a deal. And he goes, can I tell you something? And I go, yeah. He goes, do you have a relationship? And I go, yeah. He goes, why do you not only leave that sexuality to that one woman alone? And I go, well, because yeah, because porn is just porn. And he goes, right there. He goes, look what you're just saying. He goes, can I ask you something? When you watch porn, do you ever watch one video and only one video? Or do you go to multiple videos? And I sat there and I go, go to multiple videos. He goes, because now you're training your mind that once this female that you're watching is not satisfying you enough, you're going to move on to the next. Then you're going to go here and then you're going to move on to the next. So now you're mentally training yourself that you're only using and justifying women as a sex, like a sex object. Mm -hmm. And it it hit me so hard because I was like, no, no, I don't. And he goes, yes, you do. He goes, because why would you not just finish off of on that one? He's like, because you consistently want to move on sexually to something else that entices, like gets yeah, you enticed. Yeah. Like, what is the word? I'm sorry. Arouses you. Arouses you. Yeah. So I go, wow. I go, this is crazy. And he goes, and if it wasn't an addiction, why can't you stop doing it? And mm-hmm. I was like, whoa. A lot of people say that. A lot of people say, I'm not addicted. I could stop if Whatever. I wanted yeah, if to. If I want to. And then I realized if I really want a good relationship with my girl and I want God to be involved, I got to stop doing things that are not godly. So I removed myself from pornography because one day my girlfriend's not going to be young and she's not going to be the most beautiful girl in the room. And it's just going to be what she looks like at that time and age. Now it kind of comes as a little hypocritical thing because you know, you said we talk about the Instagram models posting their booty pics. We talk about, you don't want your daughter to be a bottle service girl. You don't want your daughter to be a stripper, but you're, you're, you're diving into the temptation of porn. Yeah, of which course. Which is the same thing. I mean, yeah, I'm not thinking about my daughter when I'm watching porn. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, so it's kind of like not the same thing. Don't yeah. fucking put me in that box. But, like, <laughs> but what I'm saying is there's going to be a time in my in my relationship where sex is not going to be the top priority because we're going to be kind of in an older relationship. And my wife is not going to look like these 20-year-old girls doing porn. So now my eyes are going to be curious again for what it feels like to be with a young girl. So that's where cheating could be. Uh, possibility like right now it would never be because my girlfriend's young and absolutely stunning but when we grow up if I teach myself that this is the only girl regardless of the situation so and I'm going to dive in a little kind of too much in this conversation but masturbation if I practice that I shouldn't be doing this with other women in my mind I'm teaching myself that I should only be doing this with my girl that is going to make me a stronger man so when we're apart, if I'm on tour or if I'm doing things, that I do not have eyes for another woman. So regardless of the situation, when she's not around or when she is around, my only thoughts are going towards her. So it is a hard and an absolutely very, very hard thing to do to, to teach yourself to only be with one person because monogamy now is like mm-hmm. the hardest thing to overcome. Um, I'm just going to say it's going to be step-by-step basis and you got to admit your problems, which I did. I admitted like, Hey, I am a Christian man, but I do not Christian things. Um, I got to step away from things that God is not proud of. And that's when I took the the initiative and said enough of this. And it was, it was hard. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was very, very hard, but it made me out to be a better man. And I am so much happier now knowing that that's not held against me and I'm not like chained up to it. And this can apply to a lot of things in life. If you're struggling, battling things, what George just did right there is accountability taking accountability for your actions and acknowledging that, Hey, yes, I do have a problem and I need to fix this problem. That's the first step in getting help is admitting you need help. So it's like, that's dope that you're doing that same thing with me. Like we're, we're opening up, we're being vulnerable on this. Like I'm, I said, I wasn't going to drink and I drank and I'm not happy about that. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about when I gamble, I can't 
stop gambling. You yeah. know, those are things that I acknowledge. That's why I don't, I try not to go to Vegas. That's why yeah. I, anymore, you know, cause I know that it's going to be a bad, it's going to end up bad. Um, porn's an interesting thing because you know, a lot of people got introduced to that in like middle school. Yeah. We're watered down to it now. And I was never really exposed to it. Like kids in my grade were always talking about, but I didn't have like a computer or anything like that. I didn't have a phone, so I was never really exposed to it. So that's not something in my life that um, is like, you know, it's not a crutch for me. Yeah. You know? I, I want to end it with this. But gambling is because I was exposed to that young. I want to <laughs> I want to end it with this because this is a very, 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 hopefully a powerful statement. I was praying every single night that I'd find a girl that I could fall in love with and that me and her could have a relationship through Christ, right? But then at the end of the day, I was going to the clubs and mm -hmm. I was sleeping with girls that I shouldn't be sleeping with and I was watching porn. So if you think of God, and anybody in any religion could think of their God as well, why would God want to bless you with the right person, the right man, or the right girl when he sees you treat the the wrong situations right like sorry i'm slurring because i'm <laughs> i'm so tired right now and i apologize for slurring but follow me why would god want to bless me with the perfect girl mm -hmm. if i'm going out with these girls that are sleeping with every guy or i'm making wrong decisions right so i am not you're not mature the perfect enough man. Yeah. to handle the perfect situation so a lot of people are sitting there going like well no no, no. i'll treat the right girl when she comes around i mean when she comes around with respect but it's like yo you're not ready for it so like the worst thing that could happen is you are addicted to pornography or you are addicted to sleeping with people and then you have the right one come and you mess it up. Mm -hmm. So if you really are waiting for the right one, maybe you're not waiting. Maybe you're just not ready for the right one. Maybe you need to get yourself ready. Get your mind on you, fix you. So when the right one comes, you could treat her with the utmost respect or him if a girl's watching. Mm -hmm. And if a girl's addicted to porn, that's it's fine. It's not like one way or another. That was a long response. Thanks for asking that question. Now, yeah, dude, that was, that, was only recent, the, like, that was only the first half of the question. <laughs> how you're seeing, you said in uh, episode three of your two men show and how you said like going to other f things and finding love and affection on other things is not necessarily good. For me, it's not always girls, but it's just like friends and other things. Like I surround myself with good people I have a very good core Christian friend group, and it's amazing, and they've helped me through a lot recently. Oops. And then when, like, I see my ex, or I see someone that's friends with my ex or something, like, related to dating and relationships comes up, I feel alone and really self-conscious about my worth. And then I try to find my worth in something that's not who I am. How do you find your identity and how have you changed, George, and just like you're sexually driven and stuff like that? I, I have an answer for that too. Yeah, you can go ahead. I don't, I don't really understand. So basically he's saying like, how do I find my worth? Because when I see my ex, basically, I feel like lonely again. And uh -huh. I feel like I want to replace that basically. Yeah, yeah. I, I get your about I get, I get where you're coming from here. I want everybody to hear this right now. If you are waiting around for the right one and you feel like your life can't go on unless you have somebody in your life, let me just, and, and, and any religion, I just, I'm going to bring up God again, but any religion, if we believe in a higher power, I want you to realize God didn't create you like this, ready? He wasn't like, say we're talking about Mark, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about Mark and I'm God. I wasn't making Mark and like, all right, Mark, God didn't make Mark and go, okay, I finished Mark now. I'm going to make him half empty and I'm going to yeah. make him only live this life when some person enters your life. God is the creator of all things. So he didn't mistakenly make you and make you half empty. You know what I mean? Like he didn't make you halfway. He made you fully. Having a partner is a plus. Right. It's not the whole thing. When you walk in, you're not like a lot of movies are like you complete me. That's why society is so driven on getting a partner is because these movies and TV shows are like, I can't live my life without you. <laughs> no, you could. You've been living yeah. this whole lifetime without that loved one. You should only think of it as a benefit and a plus. Don't think of it as something that you need. You, it's not It's not like something you can't live without. Right. And once you see that, that's when you'll attract something great for you. One, and and, a, and, a, and a, on, if we simplify that, if a girl looks at you in the club and you're like, can somebody, can somebody out there date me? No one's going to date you. They're going to be like, yo, you're, you're weird. I'm not going to yeah. date you. You're begging for it. You need it. You're and desperate. You're desperate. 
If you walk around <laughs> thinking I love myself and whoever's around me is lucky to be in my presence right now because I'm, I got it, man. I'm rocking. I know how to live life to its fullest. You're going to start attracting some females that are going to be like, yeah. damn, I really, I really vibe with that. So really learn how to love yourself, man. Well, that's what I've talked about. The more I've focused on myself, the more I've attracted other people, you know, hitting me up, asking me to hang out and whatnot. Just focus on you and then you'll attract people because they're driven to success and they're driven to people that are focused on themselves and doing doing them doing them do you and people and if people don't like you for you then screw them it's man. a long podcast today huh yeah what are we at should we end it here hey guys how are you i want to i want to ask you a question about drinking not that because you guys drink so much that's a mark question uh, you are so open about this topic and maybe maybe you left my current experience with alcohol so for me, I didn't drink any alcoholic drink until a few weeks ago, and I like it a lot. And I like the environment with my friends during drinking. And since then, all what I want to do in my free time is to go to a bar or to, or to a club in order to drink and have fun. So is this the first stage of getting addicted? Or maybe somehow? I don't know, because I think that Thinking about going out, drinking a lot, is because in fact I have few opportunities to do, to do that. Since I'm working full time and I have limited money for that, of course. So whenever I have some free time or some extra money, I try to spend it while drinking with friends. So how can you advise me with that? Thank you so much, guys. You are the best. I think this is. Just you, I think you just need. This is something I struggle with too. Like I have a lot of temptation out there, right? And I think L.A. has made it in today's day and age. I talked about the cocaine problem. I think L.A. has made it acceptable to be an alcoholic. Like everyone's always boozing, going to the club. You can go to the club on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday, or a Sunday. Yeah. And people are always finding a reason to go drink, drink, drink. I think you need to surround yourself with people that aren't doing those things. Surround yourself with people that do activities like on a Friday night, maybe, you know, go see a movie like me and George. We do a lot of things. I don't drink during the week. He sounds young though. He sounds like he, he does sound maybe young. just started drinking for the first yeah, time. And so I think like college culture thing. too. And I actually want to talk about this. Like college culture makes alcoholism. Okay. Right. Like it's cool. You're partying all the time. You're young, but also it can roll over and become a very big problem. And if you start drinking for the wrong reasons, then that's not good at all. Like if you're drinking to suppress any anger or any anxiety, that's not good. I think it's okay to drink every once in a while and have fun. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to chime in. But also I had a friend the other day who was like shaking because they were like, they've been drinking a lot and then they had a drink and they're like, Oh, I feel so much better. That's not okay. That's, that's weird. That's a problem. Yeah. Um, well, what did you want to chime I in? I want to chime in on this. Uh, and th this might hurt your feelings. And I don't want this to hurt your feelings. I want this to kind of be a reality check. Mm -hmm. I need, not you, Mark, the guy who was mm -hmm. asking the question. I need you to do three things. One, I need you to look at your surroundings when it comes to family. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So if you have an uncle, if you have a brother, if you have a sister, if you have anybody in your family tree that suffers from addiction in any type of way, you might have addictive personalities. Mm -hmm. I know firsthand because I have it myself. That's why I don't gamble. That's why I don't drink. I put myself in better situations. Two, you need to understand that everything's good in moderation. So go have a drink, but put yourself on a limit. Don't be a loser, okay? Mm -hmm. don't, don't be like such a wimp that you can't go out and manage your drinking. Be a man. Be like, I'm going to drink tonight, but I'm going to have three drinks. I'm going to cap it at that. You don't have to be like, oh, no, I can't drink because then I'm going to lose myself. Don't do that. Be a man about it. Put yourself on a limit. Go enjoy yourself and walk away. And then three... Know when it is an appropriate time to drink. If you're waking up at noon yeah. and your friends are drinking, that's a no-no. You should be working. Working on yourself, working on your career, working on your craft. Don't be popping out Bud Light in the middle of the day. That's un it's unnecessary. If it's an occasion, it's somebody's birthday, you guys are taking shots, have fun. So don't go to one extreme to the next. Don't be like, okay, I was drinking, but then no, no, I feel right. like it's going on a bad thing. And then stop. Have moderation. And I tell that to everybody. I went through a phase where I, I definitely had a drinking problem. And I was there. I never talked about it, but I would pour a drink or two every single night and it was a bad problem. That was something that I had to acknowledge. Like, hey, bro, you, you got a problem. You need to stop this. And I actually went, this was back when I was dating Kylie. I went like five months without drinking. And... I got so much work done. I lost weight. Like drinking makes you lose, like gain a lot of weight. A lot of people blow up in the face. You can tell someone drinks a lot and their face is all puffy. Um, so I lost a lot of weight. I got in really good shape. Um, 
where was I going with this? And I learned, oh, this is, uh, this was, it was my birthday. Um, and I was like, Hey, I'm going to drink for my birthday. Cause I'm gonna have a bunch of people go out to the club. So the night before I was like, Hey, Kylie, you want to go out to, to the bowling alley? Let's have a couple drinks. So tomorrow night when I drink, I don't like get blacked out off of, you know, two drinks. And I had two drinks at the bowling alley and I woke up in the middle of the night vomiting all over myself and then i went into the shower and vomited all in the shower she had to go to the freaking cvs at four in the morning and get cleaner and like and i was just obliterated off of two drinks that just goes to show you that alcohol is poison and your body doesn't want it and the more you have it it, it, it comes accustomed to it and then you don't have it for a very long time and then look how your body reacts to it it's like it's like wow what is this this is poison like throw it get this out of me get this out of me so like giving your body a bunch of things that are not good for it is not good. So, I mean, acknowledge if you, if you're, if you're saying, Hey, am I, do I have a problem? If you're asking yourself, if you're asking me, do you have a problem? Then you should probably acknowledge the fact that since you're asking me, you probably do and take the necessary steps to stop that. Yeah. Yeah. Very much. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, drop a like comment. Yo, and we, and today we, was a really good episode. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. And mind you guys, I'm going to say this again. So we so we can make it clear. We read comments. Mm-hmm. We read the emails. We read the DMs. We love how attached you guys are to these podcasts, and it gives us more fire to do them. So yeah. we really appreciate it. Yeah, you guys. George actually hit me up last night. He's like, yo, you want to shoot the podcast tomorrow? That's the first time he's done that. He was excited to. Yeah, because I'm reading stuff, and I'm like, yeah. yo, I, 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 I almost, I'm not going to lie. I almost quit the podcast a mm-hmm. little while ago, and um, Mark told me, he's like, you know, just like stick with it. Let's see where it goes. And the one thing I said is, like, I don't like doing stuff without purpose. Mm-hmm. I don't, I, and I didn't see myself having any purpose with these podcasts, but then how many people are actually moving with this? It's like, I mean, frick. Damn it. I mean, look, it's even making us a better person. Like yeah. they're not swearing and stuff. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for listening. Have a good week. If we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and guten Nacht. <laughs>